Hello, welcome back to another video. This one's going to be looking at the topic of defaulting and how there are multiple ways to win your default. Hope you guys enjoy and hope it's helpful. Alright, so when you're defaulting, you're usually breaking the map up into certain sections where each person on the team or multiple people have specific responsibilities for areas of the map. So if you're defaulting banana, your area what you're worried about is banana and you're contesting map control there you're using utility you're trying to hold and punish aggression if you're defaulting towards a you usually take halls first and then you'll default into taking brackets later so it's just you're defaulting a or you're defaulting b or you're defaulting mid not typically mid mirage but so on inferno but um, it's just your areas of the map where you're controlling and you're contesting and defaulting is usually you're spreading across the map and you're holding most of the areas or you're trying to take map control across the map at once um yeah and you're contesting and punishing any aggression usually that the other team is typically doing the first way you can win your default is to understand how the other team is playing and sort of uh, playing off this you know adapting in real time so if you're versing a team and you're defaulting t side banana and they're dumping like you know deep set every round they're doing close molly they're double nading or even triple nading you know they're going crazy nading logs and double nading broom and they're just bombing this area and then they got someone throwing sk flashes as well you know and there's 400 bits of utility going off in banana and in here it's actually just like death you know if they're doing that at the start of the round then not going in there you know because if you go in there you're probably gonna die in that first 15 20 seconds of the round right so going in there late Maybe deny map control, trade off utility, use a deep smoke to mess with them. Maybe chain Molly's top car to delay their take. I think um, the best way to, when you're default, is to understand who you're versing. Look at what they're doing, how they're taking map control, when they're taking it, and where their advantage is, right? If they're dumping all that utility super early, the advantage is the start of the round. So you want to play into the mid to late round, right? Because now they've got no utility on two or three people and you're, you've got utility advantage over them. Late round, you can just execute the B site maybe. Um, you know, understand who you're versing, what they're doing and how you counter it. Look at where their advantage is and then play around that, you know? Don't play into their hand. That's the first one. So just understanding who you're versing. Also, a little like bonus thing on that is just like, Look at what you're throwing and whether it's actually been effective, you know? Maybe you're maybe you're playing CT banana, let's just say. You're deep nading every single round. And you look at your YouTube damage and you've got none at the end of the game. You're like, oh damn, I didn't do any damage that game. My util. You should be looking at your UD. So clicking the scoreboard, cycle stats after every round. And if you're throwing utility. Typically, everyone you should. If you're throwing utility and checking if it was actually hitting, whether you're doing damage or whether you're not, if you're not doing damage, change it up. Maybe need a different spot. Maybe need T stairs instead. Maybe they're playing retake. Maybe need broom instead of logs every round, you know? Ooh. Yeah. So just look at that and you know, adjust. You have to adapt as well to how you're playing and like whether what you're doing is actually effective. The second way to win a default is to understand there's multiple ways of winning a default. So when you're playing, Winning a default doesn't just mean that you're getting man up advantage, so you're getting kills in the default. That's definitely a good way to good way to judge it. But you could be winning your default on utility, you know? So just say you're throwing this halfway smoke and they're throwing two mollies a deep smoke and flashes, but they're not taking banana. Um, or you're throwing two mollies car and you're blocking their banana take. So they've used two mollies smoke flashes and you've only used two mollies pack. You're winning on like you know the smoking two flashes. You've got the advantage, right? So just understanding how to get an advantage through U tool, and like you know, if you're trading out one piece of U tool for their three pieces, that's good. Keep doing it. You'll win late round, late to mid round. So that's one way you can win it: utility advantage. You could be winning on map control. You could be using more U tool, but you're taking areas of the map um, very nicely. You know, just say you're thoroughly taking banana. Maybe you've done a corner molly and then also you've got a half wall flash coming in and you're taking banana that way. Sure, you've used two bits of U-Tool, but now you've got a really vital area of the map and you can actually push and pull their rotations. You can put a lot of pressure on them. They can't overstack A site now typically because they should be worried that it could be a B hit. And, you know, you've got good map control advantage over them. Another way you could do it is by damage, you know. Just say you're contested banana every round, but you're seeing you're doing like 60 UD every round, so U-Tool damage. 
just keep doing it. It's good. You're winning the default by getting damage advantage over the other team. The third way to win your default and to counter from to counter the other team from beating you is to understand whether what look at your own games and see whether you have variation while you play, you know? Actually watch your own demo and counter strat yourself and see, okay, do I just do the same thing every round? Do I molly top banana and jump to logs every round? Some people do. And then like maybe you nade on a timer, you know? If a team watches you and understands this, or even in real time sees you're doing this every round, they're gonna counter you. You need to you need to have variation and you need to remain like unknown, you know? The other team can't just understand how you're playing and be safe with that because that means they're not going to burn utility because they're not afraid of you you know they know you go passive and you activate in the last 30 seconds of the round every round so they're just going to save a smoke and a molly for late round because that's what you're doing you know you're just playing slow and then they can block you late round understand that pace changes are essential so you need to be able to change up your speed the other team needs to think you're unpredictable and you need to have ver like various ways to default your area so you can block you can uh, play in you can do half wall smoke you can do barrel smoke you know you can add like double flashes you can add window flashes to take as long as you are you know the other team doesn't understand your routine then it's fine it's good um, also, you have to be adapting to the other team in real time as well, as well, right? So if you're doing the same thing every round, you're not making live adaptations. You're just chilling. You're happy with what you're doing, and that's it. Maybe it's working. Maybe you don't need to change. But in a lot of like big games and against good teams, you will need to have variation, and you'll need to like remain unpredictable. The last point is understand your win condition for the round. So if you're playing in a team game and your IGL is calling, you know, he's they're calling he or her is saying. Alright guys, we're going to stay alive, uh, start of the round, and we're just going to go into a B-pop, or a horse pop, you know, because they're doing X, Y, Z. They're playing on bracket really heavily, and we can just bust on them, you know. We can jump in behind them and destroy them. It'll be awesome. Um, if your IGL is saying that, and they have like a really high read, or any leader is saying that, or anyone on the team, um, and they want you to stay alive, you shouldn't be running up banana in that round and be like, yes, taking a fight, you know. You don't need to take unnecessary fights. Hiccup. If you've already got a game plan, if you and you already got an edge into the round, um, you should still be maintaining map control and denying pressure, uh, denying map control and creating pressure across the map. But you shouldn't be throwing away your life if your IGL has said, you know, we're gonna do this early round. You know, understand your win condition. So now you can win your default just by denying map control. You know, keeping pressure. Um, if your IGL says, all right, guys, they're playing really aggressive, let's hold for their push, you know, get in a good spot. Have, like, a flash play ready for when you take contact, your teammate flashes you, and you kill, you know. Or your IGL might need, or they might say, this is exploitable. They're holding utility on B, you know. They're not throwing anything. Um, so what should you do? You know, you could get the AWP to lead CT, contact, and just walk in. Keep walking in. If they want to hold you too, let them hold you too. You'll walk into them and you'll kill them. And you'll be right in their face. You'll be here before they spot you. And by that point, you can throw uh, CT smoke. You can do mollies. You take sight. Just pop in. That is a crazy smoke. <laughs> but yeah, understand your IGLs. Understand like their point of the round, and understand like the win condition for the round, and like what the whole, what the whole reason is behind it. Hope you guys enjoyed. It was a shorter video. Um, let me know if you want anything else in particular in the future. If you want any more information on either of these topics. Have a good day, yes.